So this is the second part, which has been uh, described: parenchymal problems and ARDS. How to ventilate them is over. The third uh, component is lower airway obstruction. As you all know, upper airway obstruction, or I mean, lower airway obstruction, usually is a problem with resistance. So because there is a resistance problem, such patients, for example, if you take asthma, you don't want to ventilate them because the ET tube as such is a foreign body which can trigger bronchospasm. Plus, there are a lot of difficulties in ventilation. It is a very difficult subset of patients to ventilate. So, what you do, you try maximum to manage medically. Like you can use uh, non-invasive ventilator, CPAP, BiPAP, or even high-flow nasal cannula. And intubation and ventilation will usually be the last resort for such patients. So, again, if you see in asthma, like ARD is heterogeneous lung disease. Asthma also, you can see it is different. See, this is a normal alveoli and the patient is breathing spontaneously. Point A in the first graph. The point B, the same first graph, we will be discussing the first graph, up, upper uh, figure. The point A is a normal alveoli. Point B is a collapse. You can see the black lining which is causing the, I mean, that is a mucus plug or something which is collapsing the alveoli. Point C again is hyperinflated lung. There are two pluses inside, so which means air is able to go in, but it is not able to go out because of the bronchospasm. And point 4 is again a bronchospasm, but there is some mild degree of airway obstruction. So again, that is hyperinflated. So C and D are hyperinflated. So if you see in the second figure, which is the below, so again, whatever air you go give in positive pressure, when the patient is on ventilator, it goes to point A. And you can see the point A is becoming overinflated. But no air goes into point B. Some amount of air goes into point C and point D. The same thing happens in air days also. The same thing is happening in asthma also. So whatever your normal lung is again getting more and more inflated. And to add to it, already hyperinflated points like C and D are getting even more hyperinflated. So this is the problem in asthma. So again, there is not much. So there is increased respiratory work because your air is not able to come out. And asthma, if you see air is going in, but it is not able to come out. Because the air is not able to come out, the next time the patient has to take a lot of effort to breathe in to overcome the pressure in the alveoli. So that's why even though asthma is a problem with expiration, there is some inspiratory problem though. The patient has a lot of effort he has to take to overcome this problem. So inspiratory problem is also there because secondary to the expiratory problem. And there is air trapping. All the air which is going in is not being able to come out. It is all stuck in the alveoli. So there is increased time constant leading on to increased resistance. So again, it is heterogeneous lung disease. There, but asthma again, they can also have some amount of collapse. And there can be areas of short time constants also. So dynamic hyperinflation, which means in this graph, you can see the graph mountains which are seen in the lower part is normal. You can see in the upper part, the inspiratory air is going in, but the expiratory air is falling short. It is not touching the baseline, not able to show in the pointer. Uh, again, in the next one, it is going in, but it is not able to come out. So you can see there is some amount of air which is getting accumulated in the lung. So that is called the trapped volume of air. So because so much of trapped volume of air is there, the chest looks like a barrel shape and there is hyperinflation. So because of hyperinflation, this is called as dynamic hyperinflation. This is a dynamic process. This keeps happening with each breath. So the, the lung is like one big barrel. So because of which, what are the problems can happen? The venous return can drop down. There can be a chance of development of pneumothorax, which can happen. Because the alveoli are already full with too much of gas. So pneumothorax can happen and there can be decreased venous return. Sometimes the air is so much that they can suddenly go into cardiac arrest too. Yeah. See, asthma, what happens is normally when you breathe, I mean, because of first response to any problem is tachypnea. So as the tachypnea happens, your CO2 tends to get washed out. So as the CO2 tends to wash out, if you do a blood gas during that point of time, your CO2 will become low. But over a period of time, when this tachypnea is happening for a longer period of time, the patient tends to get tired 
on his respiratory rate sort of comes down so there can be it sort of little lower down so your co2 will start appearing normal so that is a time where the patient has become tired and because of that that is fatigue so because of that the carbon dioxide level is normal so that is called pseudo normalization of pco2 and which is a very very bad sign so in asthma usually the oxygenation will not be much of a problem if oxygenation is significantly affected then may there is areas of collapse or severe pneumonia which is happening usually asthma is a dead space related problem where you have carbon dioxide issues so it usually responds to supplemental oxygen so if you feel asthmatic patients requires very high fao2 that means there is some other problem like collapse or pneumonia which is there so an early abg in asthma will be hypocapnic because they usually have a very high respiratory rate and the tidal volumes are usually very good but if the ph on the pco2 approaches i mean if the pco2 approaches normal that means there is a fatigue which is set in and along with that there is lactic acidosis means the patient is getting tired because there is increased work of breathing because of which there is lactic acidosis and because of fatigue his sort of respiratory rate sort of tends to go down a little bit and his co2 normalizes so this normal co2 should not be a happy factor you don't wait for hypercarbia to set in so once the co2 so suppose the co2 was 25 earlier now it has become 35 of 35 to 40 then you get worried in the asthmatic patients or any lower airway obstruction for that matter so in intubation again as i said we try to delay intubation as much as possible okay so because intubation itself can provoke bronchospasm you are putting a ed tube which again can act as a foreign body and trigger bronchospasm and in ventilation already as i said your alveoli are full of air and intubation and ventilation is positive pressure so once you give positive pressure there is a high chance that it can rupture and cause pneumothorax because of dynamic hyperinflation and hypotension i think uh, high co2 as one one question has been asked because there is high co2 it is more dangerous but the question here was which is denoting early fatigue so early set fatigue will be normal co2 your high co2 means that means already the problem is when cross the it is not a early stage it is little late stage in asthma so how to identify early fatigue is normal co2 so this is the problems which can happen in asthma here you can see because of dynamic hyperinflation air is trapped into the alveoli so when you intubate them you are bagging them suppose you bag them excessively you can see here the patient can develop pneumothorax the top orange one and because there is excessive air in the lungs there is positive intrathoracic pressure you have decreased venous return and there can be a tamponade effect over that if you give sedation again sedation will cause uh, veno dilatation and decrease the venous return so again hypotension and all these air which is staying in the lungs will generate some amount of positive pressure that is called peep which is automatically generated already you have some amount of peep in the airway and uh, over that this expiratory air does not return to the baseline so that is called auto peep when this auto peep sort of accumulates accumulates after each breath that can be a massive auto peep formation and sometimes that can even compress the heart and cause cardiac arrest so in such situations what you have to do is disconnect the patient from the disconnect the ventilator from the et tube and then squeeze the chest so that this auto peep sort of uh, comes out and again positive intrathoracic pressure will increase the right ventricular afterload and because of that the pulmonary vascular resistance will increase so intubation as such is a very dangerous procedure while intubating asthmatic kid always remember you will have to bag very slowly and give lot of e time during the process of intubation and during sedation also whatever drugs which cause bronchospasm should be avoided like for example morphine should not be given such patients ketamine is preferred because in ketamine that can cause bronchodilatation so bronchodilatation will help full in asthma so that is one way and uh, you'll always have to paralyze and the et tube which you put should be a largest size et tube so that is again important large size et tube don't back too much you can preload such patients with fluid because of the possibility of hypotension which develops during the process of intubation 
so again we have this is an important graph which you measure the p plateau pressure as we already know the pip is if you see in the yellow part of the graph the pip is high okay but if you see the p plateau is much lower so unlike ards where the p plateau is very high here the pip is higher and the p plateau is low so which means the increase in pip is probably due to increase resistance because the trans survey pressure is much higher so this is the difference between ards and asthma so again in this graph this is again a flow time graph because i as i already discussed earlier the there is only graph which has a negative deflection is a flow time graph the red one is the inspiratory part of the flow asthma is predominantly expiratory problem so expiration is not able to touch the baseline it is falling short of the baseline so some amount of air is getting trapped into the alveoli and this amount of air is called as the auto peep so again this is a flow volume graph where your inspired air goes in and the expired air is not able to come and touch the baseline and there is scooping which again indicates there is airway obstruction so this is again a pressure volume graph which again shows that the air is i mean you you don't see the volume coming and touching the baseline so there is some amount of air trapping which is happening which is called auto peep so to measure the auto peep you usually do a expiratory hold so the inspiratory hold or the expiratory hold has to be done only in sedated patients complete sedation with no spontaneous respiratory effort so when they are making any spontaneous respiratory effort you cannot measure either auto peep or peep plateau so for peep plateau you put inspiratory hold in a completely sedated patient ideally sedated and paralyzed with no respiratory effort at all no spontaneous effort at all similarly for auto peep you press the expiratory hold and measure it so your main aim of ventilation again in lower airway obstruction is again as i already said all the air whatever volume which you give flow which you give goes to the normal alveoli and that will again get hyperinflated and your already hyperinflated alveoli will again get even more hyperinflated so again low tidal volume strategy so now for any ventilation low tidal volume is the strategy so basically lung protective ventilation holds good even for normal lung ventilation so even for so asthma ads for any problem it is lung protective ventilation which means low tidal volume ventilation and accept permissive hypercapnia so again in this case again permissive hypercapnia is accepted which means irrespective of the co2 values if your ph is above uh, 7.2 you are happy and you try to avoid dynamic hyperinflation so how do you avoid dynamic hyperinflation you don't give more volumes if you give more volumes again it will get trapped inside so you give low volumes and you give low prolonged e time so you want the air which is stuck inside the alveoli to come out so normal iu ratio is 1 is to 2 here you keep a inspiratory time of 1 and expiratory time of 3 or 4 so you want all the air in to come out so first you give low tidal volumes and whatever volume which is inside you want that to come out so how do you do that by increasing the expiratory time so this is one way of doing it and you don't want that to happen often so that's why you keep a very low respiratory rate when you keep a very low respiratory rate naturally your e time tends to be more so more volume tends to come out so by keeping low respiratory rate and low tidal volume the air going in is minimized and by increasing the e time your air coming out is also increased 